This is America in Space, a weekly news and information program on current events dealing with the space industry. Welcome, and thanks for joining me today. I'm Don Meyer, Space Coast News Editor. Did you know that many of the spacesuits used by NASA on the space station are decades old? Those suits are in need of replacement to go to the moon and beyond. Last September, NASA hired Axiom Space to build a new spacesuit for the first Artemis moon landing mission to the lunar south pole. There are shadowed craters there that are home to some of the coldest temperatures in the solar system, almost 400 degrees below zero. Going into a permanently shaded region on the moon is something that's never been done before and creates a new challenge for developing a spacesuit. The new Axiom Extra Vehicular Mobility Unit, or AXEMU, spacesuit was revealed on March the 15th at Space Center Houston's Moon to Mars Festival. It's a prototype with a full fleet of training spacesuits to be delivered to NASA by late this summer. The spacesuit will provide astronauts with advanced capabilities for space exploration while providing increased flexibility, greater protection to withstand the harsh environment, and specialized tools to accomplish exploration needs and expand scientific opportunities. Using innovative technologies, the new spacesuit will enable exploration of more of the lunar surface than ever before. Here's Mark Strasberg from CBS News, Russell Walston from Axiom Space, Apollo astronaut Charlie Duke, Russell Kelly of Axiom Space, Peggy Whitson, the director of human spaceflight at Axiom and former astronaut, Zach Paw of Axiom, and astronaut Laura Kearney to tell us about the new spacesuits. Going into a permanently shaded region on the moon is it's something that's never been done before uh, by anything. NASA spent 15 years developing its own next generation moon suit before outsourcing the project to Axiom. The company adapted more than half of NASA's design. So this is it. it yes, it's pretty close. Inevitably we'll tweak a couple things, but in large part that, that's, that's pretty much the suit. With one notable cosmetic difference, the color. The outer layer will be white, made of mylar and Kevlar. What about this suit would make Neil and Buzz and the, the Apollo guys jealous? Oh, probably everything. <laughs> I think this suit is going to have a, a, a huge leap forward in terms of mobility. The Apollo suits were bulky, inflexible. Moonwalking astronauts often fell. Getting back up looked like slapstick. It was hard work, yeah. Charlie Duke was the 10th man to walk on the moon. He remembers even the simplest of tasks, like picking up a hammer was a struggle. Working against that suit was uh, demanding, squeezing the gloves and moving the arms and trying to bend over, and uh, so it was exhausting. This suit will be much easier to walk in or to do, the, to do a lot of the same tasks that they did back in Apollo and more, um, but to do it in a, a little bit easier way. Axiom engineer Russell Kelly slipped into the suit to show us how flexible it can be. Hey, you do that pretty easily. Oh yeah, it's, uh, it's not too bad. It's a top to bottom redesign. The helmet's greater visibility. And these boots were made for moonwalking, thermally insulated for the moon's south pole. Can you hit a golf ball in the suit? I hope so. I think you can. <laughs> and until now, no spacesuit was ever designed to fit a woman. Oh, I think it looks really cool. I Peggy Whitson is director of human spaceflight at Axiom. I'm heading back to the pole. Copy, Peggy. The former NASA astronaut has spent more time in space than any American and completed 10 spacewalks wearing suits now more than four decades old. In some of them, I couldn't even get my hands together. That makes it hard to do a lot of detailed and delicate tasks. Just to have a suit that fits Oh, it's huge. This 21st century spacesuit is made with 21st century technology. Laser cutters precisely slice different fabrics. These 3D printers build components, saving time and money. But some parts are still assembled the old-fashioned way. In Axiom's sewing room, we met Zach Paw. His resume includes the Houston Ballet and Cirque du Soleil. His new challenge? Space gloves. There is definitely an added sense of responsibility with space work. This is more exacting? This is more exacting, yeah, exactly. 
Axiom suit prototypes will eventually be tested here at NASA's Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory. Part of the 40-foot deep pool now simulates a South Pole lunar landscape. We can mimic um, partial gravity. NASA's Laura Kearney oversees the program and will make sure Axiom is meeting requirements. It's going to give us a really great indication of how mobile the suit is and again what kind of fatigue, if anything, the crew members are going to feel after working for six or seven hours. Making a suit for an astronaut is no ordinary trip to a tailor and Axiom knows the stakes. I go to church with astronauts. We see them when we're getting groceries. We, we know their kids. The product you're making, their life is going to depend on that. So it's something we take extremely seriously. The moon seems closer than ever, and this new suit is a big step. As they mentioned, a spacesuit worn on the moon must be white to reflect heat and protect astronauts from extreme high temperatures. But the prototype suits in the presentation were nearly black due to a cover layer being used for display purposes to conceal the suit's proprietary design. Axiom Space collaborated with costume designer Esther Marquis from the Apple TV Plus series for All Mankind to create this custom layer using the Axiom logo and brand colors. And they look really cool. I am ready to see the real ones. Bring them on. Thank you for joining me. Remember each Tuesday to join David Denault for America's Return to Space and join me every Friday for America in Space. From the Florida Space Coast, I'm Dawn Meyer, Space Coast News Editor for About Space Today. Thanks for listening. Be sure to share our program with your family and friends and follow us on Facebook. Join us each week for news and information on America in Space.